Hey everybody, we're down at Paul Smith's College again, and um, Jim is walking with the Forester John, looking at possible places where he's going to be able to come back and log maybe this summer, maybe in the fall, talking about just uh, what would need to be done. And You've got a tree like this? I'll just let them talk nice, for a little bit. Fairly deep crown, pretty well formed tree. Uh -huh. And it's got competition on three sides. So you want to save that and get save rid of it. Save it and stuff. yeah, but not too much because it's spruce, it's liable blow to blow over. over. So to be able to come in and just a little bit at a time, um, you know, either this one, and this has this big seam in it, it would be nice to get that cleaned up. Yeah. And then let the root, ex root system expand into that newly available below ground growing space let the crown expand, let the tree acclimate itself to this new environment, and then be in a position eight, 10, 12 years, you know, take one more, open it up a little bit more. So that after doing this twice or a third time, then you'd have some real options. And if you wanted to open it up more and try to regenerate, if you wanted to get something in the mix, you know, take advantage of, say the hemlock that you've got in here, this is a site that could support pine, but we don't see any to be able to do things that are a little bit more creative. You'd be less constrained. Because right now, if you cut it at all heavily, it's all gonna end up on the ground, or at least there's a high risk of that. So, so just you know, a focus on finding the highest quality, most vigorous trees, giving them a little bit more room to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and over 50 acres, there's, there's enough volume. And it's not, you know, we're lucky it's not, it's not real poor quality stuff. There's, there's stuff to work with. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's the logic of it. Um, a lot of the balsam would be, uh, is at risk of blowing over or starting to lose value as it is. Um, and then in places, so, so well, yeah, go ahead. Are you, are you thinking that, I guess, well, are you thinking that you want this junk cut also? No, no, no it doesn't have to be. Because it's gonna nope. die anyways. Because it's not, it's, it's not, inhibiting Partly the development nice. of the nice trees. Yep. It, it's kind of irrelevant, you know. Okay. Um, that little balsam in there, not growing well, probably rotten in the center, but not in anybody's way either. Right. It's a cost to deal with it. Um, when we're ready to, if the thought is, we'd like to regenerate or we'd like to reshape this or we'd like to try to you know, do something uh, intervening in a way that's gonna, gonna lead to more drastic change, maybe then we need to deal with it. At that point, it's an investment to, to, it's a cost to deal with a tree like that. Mm -hmm. So be it, right? They, if it's justified that we'll go ahead and do it. Right. right now, we don't really have that option because these trees, or at least if we were to go that route, it would mean bearing more risk, mm -hmm. right? So to, to, posi to put these trees in a stronger position where even if all we say is we want to let this tree grow for another hundred years, right? Right now, it's not really well, it's, it's better positioned than any of its neighbors but it's not as well positioned as it could be to have that as an option if we were to gradually give more and more growing space to it so that it was wider spreading root roots, lower center of gravity, you know, more robust stump, deeper crown, just kind of all the pieces that make a tree happy. Mm -hmm. um, it's not doing bad, but it could do better. And that's, that would be the focus as we went through. If you're clear me by, by the day, it doesn't matter. I, I'd be willing to do it. I, I would see a lot of different ways of doing it. Um, and definitely the wagon with possibly even a single horse type of thing. Uh -huh. Getting it in. Now what would you do with the wood? Uh, we, we, would just, um, we would just sell it to conventional markets, I think. And send it up to Canada for two like horse. But uh, yeah, in general, I think it would just be marketing it, finding the finding the best home for it. And mostly straightforward. These trails are so nice. Is this um I mean this would be plenty wide. Some of these spots it's a little too narrow and have yeah, to get over yeah. So this was track here you could it wouldn't be using the road anyway to say we'd be able to box. I mean, I'm shooting from the hip a little bit, right? But I would assume this isn't... I mean, you're wide enough. Right, exactly, and better off. So we kind of segment by segment figure out where it made sense. Mm -hmm. 
we plan it out and think about where the skid trail should be and when we when it makes sense to utilize the trail that's already in place we would and when it doesn't we wouldn't and maybe it i mean it also gives my ideas of a total different way of doing things here. okay which is why so even the one horse on a, on a special wagon that's narrow enough to fit through these trails that's the same uh-huh and then very very flexible in how I do do things, you know. Uh-huh. You know, over the long run, um, I would have a strong preference for getting to see you here at the college, being flexible, <laughs> being creative, doing different. You know, we right. just had one continuous run of all the same stuff, and it worked out fine. Well, that would be great. Yeah. But. I mean, I enjoy cutting that big pine the most of anything, uh -huh. but I understand what you're coming from, and I'm willing to. But to, to do different to things, try, to try different, different things, things, to show different, you know, different ways of doing it. Uh, and again, as we go forward, the hope, the expectation, the goal is to get students more involved in what you're doing, uh -huh. give us more opportunities to really learn from how you approach all this, and right. like I said before, in the nicest way I could. We want to take advantage of you, right, <laughs> you know, right. like we want to, we've got this, this, this resource that's right here, an opportunity to do something that no one internally at the college can do yet. Right. And hopefully over time, right. something we can build on. Um, and so getting to not just see what you've done differently in one spot from another, but to then an opportunity to hear why you did it differently or yep. why yep. you thought it might work, but it turned out it didn't and what you learned from and exactly. all of exactly. that. Exactly. So yeah, this is a different animal. There's, there's hardwood that would be different still. There's spots that are a little bit more challenging terrain that would be different still. Um, there's, there is more big pine um, where what we did before kind of just, again, it's the same sort of logic that we talked about a second ago, just trying to keep those options open, finding the best trees. Yeah strengthening their position within, securing their position within the stand so that we've got the option to act, we've got the option to wait, to go a lot of different directions. Um, well, I think what would be nice if you could possibly even, well, for one, we've got to kind of come up with a, a daily rate, mm -hmm. but also it would be really helpful if you could come in here and just do a section and mark a section. Uh -huh. So I can have a better idea what, what we're dealing with as to know better ways how I to get it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause I can, we, you know, we drive through it once in a while. We just, we wouldn't have to have you here. Uh -huh. I could just run out and take a peek at it yep. and get a better idea of what's yep. the way it would be marked. You certainly, uh, certainly do something like that. Or again, I'm open-minded if, if you think, uh, you know, a hardwood job, uh, a different pine job that's, um, I mean, there's other parts of the Vic that have pine that would be more along those I, lines. But I, I really don't care if I'm getting paid. Uh huh. Um, it's just, I, I want to have it kind of in my head as to how I want to tackle it. Yeah, exactly. Before I come up here and do it, you know? Yeah. And I just got some, some ideas going through my head. As to how I do something like that, if I if I can imagine how you have it, we're gonna have it marked, but uh -huh. it'd be a lot easier to have it actually marked than just imagine how you're gonna have it marked. Uh huh. Yep. So, Same barn uh, since forever. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's little signs there that say 1980, so at least since then. Yeah. Well, that's could be when it would have been 1980. Yeah. yeah. So the kids. Yes. It, is it a short walk to the? They walk, do they walk over? Or yeah, drive? so um, they can walk or drive. I have some students who ride bikes, some who walk. Um, there's a trail right around the left side of the barn here that goes right by the lake all the way up towards the admissions building. Um, and that's maybe a five, 10 minute walk to get to campus. Okay. Or you can walk out along Keys Mill Road and the highway to get to campus. And that's yeah. also only five or 10 minutes. We ought to have another intro because you did it a few, few months ago. Yeah. But give us an intro of what's going on. So. Camille has, I, I told Camille we'd be coming over to get a tour of the barn and, and, and see her class. Mm -hmm. So this is Camille and let her explain <laughs> to you what's- and where are we? And where we're all and all that good stuff. Yes, awesome. So 
Again, my name's Camille. I'm the barn manager here at Paul Smith College. So we are at Paul Smith College now. Um, the barn right here is, like I said, just about a five or 10 minute walk from campus proper. So campus is maybe right that way, not even a mile. Um, out here, we have our main barn. We have our lean-to that has most of the equipment that we use day to day. Um, there's five different very large pastures out here. Um, you can see one or two from the road, but if you go up and over the hill, there's even more both directions. Um, you can see out here we have my class that is just now showing up um, for the draft horse management session. Uh, and out here we have our two halflingers, Dana and Dodge, um, who we do all of our work with. So, there you go. I think that's a good intro, yeah. Um, so to give you a little bit of a tour then, this is our main barn where we work out of, so you can follow us on inside. And we're just doing some light spring cleaning, picking up all of the sawdust that we put down for winter purposes. When she says spring, <laughs> she has one of her students over there getting rid of a pile of snow, which we haven't seen for a month down at our place. Yeah, it lingers here in different shade spots for sure. It'll be around. All right. So inside here, we have our main staging area is what I would call it. Um, all of the harnesses that we use day to day are up on this wall. Um, the students are currently doing a restoration project. So all of this new wood over here, these are our new doors that are going up. Um, out that way, we have our run in as well. And that's where the horses can always come in. So this main pasture that it's attached to is always open for them. So they're generally outside most of the mm -hmm. time. Yep, yep. We bring them in to grain them in the morning and that's about the only time that they come inside. Okay. Yeah. And when you need to work them, you do you harness them in here? We can harness them in the stalls in if the, it's like okay. cold or rainy, okay. but if not, there's a couple of different stands outside where we can hook them up as well. Okay. So there's one out under that flag and there's one on the side of the barn as well. And this is the um, And then, yeah, over here are the tie stalls that we have. And this is where they get grained in the morning. Nice. So, Dana and Dodge. <laughs> very nice. They've got their spots, yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah. Very um, Adirondack-y. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, the uh, log cabin everywhere. Yes, oh, very yeah. nice. Oh, yeah. And um, I wanted to mention that you're on Instagram, right? Yes, yes. Uh, the Paul Smith College Draft Horse Program has an Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, all of those sorts of things. Um, so if you want to give us a follow, it is PSC Draft Horse on all of those. Okay. Very yeah. nice photos. And, and I, see you, I see you have your parents' uh, sweatshirt oh, yes. on. Yes, and I've got, this is my uh, home sweatshirt. So Gothel's Belgians are my family out in Indiana, so repping them. And I also have my Paul Smith sweater that I had on as well, but <laughs> got hot when you're working, this you know. This looks very, very nice out here. Thank you, yeah. Um, so yeah, we have our emergency box stall that's currently used for storage because, knock on wood, no emergencies. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, a bunch of old horseshoes. Um, you'll also notice like up on this beam behind you here, we have printed a lot of different nameplates from all of the old horses. Um, so all of those are past horses of the program. When you drive along the road, you'll see on the outside of the barn, there's a list of names. Those I are all of our, yeah, yep, those are all of our past horses as well. Cool. So, and you've been here how long? Um, just about a year actually. I'm coming okay. up on my year anniversary. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I started early May of last year. Okay. And yeah, then this lean-to over here is a lot of the uh, items that we use more frequently day to day. So our main people hauler is over here on the end. Uh, this green four cart is what we will use for logging today. Uh, we have a red four cart that's set up for single, and then a bunch of different projects that we're working on. So the actual um, classes that people can take at Paul Smith regarding horses and that sort of thing are what exactly? So I teach a draft horse management class. There's only one section of it right now, so it's basically introduction to draft horse management. Um, we go over basic care, uh, feeding requirements, pasture requirements, housing, things like that, mm -hmm. as well as how to harness, how to drive, and then the different types of instances that you can use horses in. So sustainable logging, agriculture, transportation, agro-tourism, things like that. Um, I'm hoping to build on that and have like an advanced section of draft horse management that focuses just on getting out in the field and doing that hands-on work since the intro you have to cover a lot of things in class as well. Um, but we're hoping to expand and hopefully build a minor someday. So 
students can minor in draft horse education, draft horse management, different things like that. So, oh, that's cool. Great. Yeah, that's yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> so, would you say it's kind of a laid back kind of a class? Um, compared to your traditional classes, probably. Uh, we still get a lot of work done, but because of the course material that we cover. It's not just sitting in a lab. We're not taking tests and quizzes and exams every week. Uh, they do have weekly assignments that ask them to review the course material with just with some basic questions to make sure that they're getting like the important information out of it. Um, but a lot of the course we just focus on trying to get them out in the field, get their hands on the lines, get that kind of experience. And this class, if I'm not wrong, it's a four hour class too. Yes, yeah. So it is also a four hour lab once a week. So we like to break it up into different sections within that four hours. So we're not just doing one thing. So right. for example, today we're starting with some just field work, cleaning up our pasture, again, spring cleaning kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna shift into doing a little bit of logging as well as working on our restoration project. So hopefully hanging up some of those doors today. Okay. Yeah. That's good, practical experience. That's yeah. Really Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So Camille explained that part of the thing they do is they go out and get the horses and bring them in. It's part of the training of the students or the things, one of the things they have to learn. Are they full grown? They are. <laughs> they are. So Dodge on this side is 14, Dane on the other side is 17. They're so tiny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because a lot of people who don't have Josh Watch experience come out and they're like, they're so big. I'm like, well. <laughs> <laughs> so if y'all want to go ahead and start grooming, I don't know that we're going to put shoes on all four oh, feet, um, but again, definitely the front two. Go from there, but they have pretty durable feet, so is don't this, have to pay for all Is four. her foot just like <laughs> caked and stuff? Yeah, so just hey, Daddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> yep, yep, just keep keep going. <laughs> mm, this I don't is know great. How, like, to go. I don't know. So remember we have to find those lines along the frog, so all of that can come off too. Yeah. Yeah, dog, you're missing a food. Buddy. Does this make you envious, Brent? Yeah, it makes yeah, you want to go home and brush horses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Having all the help? I'm, I'm talking about having all the yeah, help. Yeah, I know. My goodness. <laughs> Four people per, per animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do they get real sleek oh, in yeah. the summer too? Oh yeah, her summer yeah. dapples are already starting to come out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. It took me a while to find them last summer when I got here, but I like that they're starting to come out now. <laughs> yeah, they. ours are shedding a lot too like that right now. Yeah, yeah. We've gotten a good bulk of it off, but... They're very fuzzy ponies, so. Well, up here in this country, it takes a while. It takes a while, yeah. 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 They look very well cared for. <laughs> Thank you. So the trick with his is that the collar pad right here, on the other side, it slides down. Oh. So you have to kind of slide it up. Her shoulders. So I got a question for you guys. What what made you want to take this class in the first place? Anybody? Um, I guess I I mean I, I like animals. Um, I was looking for more of like a forestry program since I'm an NRCM student, but mm -hmm. um, I heard about draft horse logging and I thought it'd be really interesting to uh, just give it a try. Mm -hmm. um, a little different take on uh, animals and animal use since I did a lot of rodeo and stuff like that. Yeah. So I thought it'd be really cool. Okay. So I think we're all familiar with the four cart. We've hooked to it before and done driving lessons, so I'm not gonna talk over this front piece. Um, but today we are going into the woods to do some logging. So yesterday the intro to forestry class had their horses and hand tools lab. 
and they took down a couple trees for us and set out some extra logs so that we could go back out there today and do the skidding part of it. Um, so we aren't gonna be cutting down trees. That's already happened. We're just doing the rest of it. Um, so if you wanna come around back here. So you'll notice that this four cart is set up for logging. So all of these different teeth are meant to hook your chains into or also the hooks, whichever one you can reach. Um, unfortunately, this is the only chain that we have right now. So it is kind of short, but it works for what we need to do for today. Um, so how it'll work is we'll find a log in the woods. We're going to back the horses up to it. You want the log to be sitting up here, right next to the wheels, as close as you can get it. This chain, you're gonna lay down next to the log. We have some tools in there too. We'll roll the log over the chain. It's a slip chain, which means that there's this one big loop at the end. So imagine the log is sitting in here. We'll take the end of the chain. It's gonna slide through the loop. And this is going to tighten down onto the log. It doesn't need to sit really far back on the log since it's going to tighten down. So maybe eight inches back on the log, if that. So then with the end here, with whatever you have left, we're gonna try and loop it through these teeth. If it doesn't reach to loop through the teeth, we can go to these hooks. It's just not as secure since you can't loop it as many times. Um, so you'll take the end and you want to do an S curve if you can. Again, as many back and forth as you can to get it tight is best. Um, we try not to have the log sitting too close to the tire. So we try to keep it in the middle, but obviously there's less teeth in the middle and our chain is not long enough to reach up to the front. So you can kind of loop it like that if you want. Any way that you do it, it's gonna stay tight. And we'll drag the log down. Um, as always, whenever we are stopped out in the woods, there needs to be a student at the front of the horses making sure that they are standing still. There will always be someone in the lines, but these two get pretty excited when they're pulling out logs, so we need to make sure that there's someone in front for safety reasons, right? Um, so before you touch the chain or start rigging anything up, make sure that there's always someone in front of the horses as well. When we get the log hooked up, we'll pull it down to the little logging stand that's by the road there. Um, I'll have students follow me or be stationed down there. Same deal when you get down there, make sure that there's a student up front before you then unhook it. Before you try and slide it off the log, detach it from the cart, right? So that if anything does happen, you're not attached to the cart. Um, once you do that, we'll pull ahead to get out of your way. You can slide the chain off the log and then we'll push it onto the stand. Pretty simple. Are there any questions? Okay. Exciting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll try and get as many of you on the lines to pull out a log as possible. If it doesn't happen today, we'll do it another day. Um, I might have to do some of the maneuvering depending on where they put the logs down and how tight of a spot it is. But again, we'll try and get as many of you doing as much as possible here. And so the logging that we're doing today too is much more of like a demonstrative kind of show for us here in class. Um, the logs that we're pulling out are gonna be maybe like eight foot, uh, just little red pines. Um, so it's just kind of give you an idea for how the system works, but it's not at a production scale. Um, so in a bit here, Jim is gonna talk to you all about the production kind of side of it um, and how to do it at that scale. There you go. Yeah, and then just pull her right into Okay. So if you want to push her butt over, get her closer to the tongue. And then, so we say drop five, hook on three, so that means one, two, three, four, five, get dropped. We're going to hook on this one. So this last piece, you lose up so that it's out of the way. Okay, I remember that. Yep. And that's from right here? Yep. So another thing, um, when we're hooking the log, right, I said there should always be someone in the front. When the log is hooked, whoever's hooking it, make sure that you hook it, get out of the way and let me know that it's ready. The person up front, make sure that you stay there until we make eye contact and I say clear. When I say clear, it's your job to get out of the way. So that doesn't mean back up and stay in front of the horses, but go one direction or the other out of the way. Um, again, these two, because they are smaller, they need a little bit more of that initial momentum to get the log moving. So I kind of let them take off a little bit hard when we're around the woods. Again, you'll see it's not that explosive, but 
Regardless, you don't want to be in front of them. Yeah, yeah. No snow. No snow. I guess we'll kind of be put down, but we'll be good. Um, so, right over here, this is where we're going to be dropping our logs, so this is where they get picked up. We're going to aim for these logs first, so I'm going to go up a little bit and turn around so that we can line up. Um, but if you guys want to hang up here. Any of you in the forestry program? So I'm actually, I'm going to pull up a little bit and try and back up to this log. Um, and then, ooh, because we're on a hill, it's just going to be more difficult for them to try and stand still. So again, whoever's going to grab their heads, just know that. Person, so now that there's someone at their head, now you can grab this chain and take it off. Put that on. And if we had a larger chain, we could probably loop these two together because they're pretty small. But since our chain is small, we just won't push it. So again, if you want to lay that down next to it, or if you're able to slide it under and like shimmy it down, you can do that too. Yeah. And again, it only needs to be like six to eight inches back, so you don't need to go back too far. That's perfect. And then that loops through. And then again, you kind of want to try and center it as much as you can. And you want that to be as tight as possible too with no slack so that you don't have slack when you hit it. Like that? Yeah. Um, so again, they get excited. They're going to want to hit it a little bit harder. It's not that big of a log, so they definitely are able to do this. Um, but you'll kind of see that they want to go, but you always want to keep them at a walk still, right? So momentum, but not running. Um, so for the purpose of this log, I'll also just have you all follow me back down the hill real quick, and then we'll split up so that we aren't all walking back and forth. Sound good? Okay. okay. All right. I logged um, commercially, I guess you call it that. Um, so on an average day, um, you know what a log truck is. And of course there's tractor trailers and there's straight jobs. I would normally put out close to a track, uh, close to a regular truckload a day, which is three, about 3,000 board feet, three to 4,000 board feet. Um, and I, <coughs> I have a cart like this somewhat, but not like this completely. I don't know why this is like this is. Um, and, and it's it's here. not a very good setup at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, this, this is the idea is right, and that's where mine is. But it's such that you, you'll drop a link in. You need a bigger chain. And you, well, you need no, you really don't, because you don't want a bigger chain for this, because it's a lot more heft to carry. I mean, you do. I mean, well, the idea is right. The idea is right, but but it's just a lot heavier to, to work. My chains are 12 feet long but there's still this diameter and and so and this is fine as long as it's a good hardened chain but um this could be fixed and maybe they you, they would fix it here at, at school i'm sure yeah. so that you can just drop this in and yeah. then whatever link you have will hold yeah. you don't have to wrap Instead it around of, like that yeah um, which is a huge pain in the neck i can see that yeah um so uh but my car is basically the same way i do have on my car i have a bumpers which come like this uh, so that when you are actually this like this I, I don't know how to do it on this car but when you hit it come up upon a tree like right like this it wouldn't get stuck in here the tree wouldn't get stuck in here it bounced the whole cart beside us away from the tree which is a really big big nice thing to have um, I log in many different ways Sometimes I just use the cart and just skid, just like you guys are doing today. Um, but a lot of times I will have, I have an excavator and I have a skid steers 
and so I actually load logs onto sleds, onto wagons, and I can pull out tremendous more because of that, because it's on, on reels, obviously, it's easier. Um, so I do it a lot of different ways, every lot is different. Um, but production-wise, that's what I shoot for, and I usually can do that. Um, you know, I don't, I do it to make a living, so I have to produce enough to justify that, you know, to make, to make that work. My horses are obviously a lot bigger than these guys. These guys are perfect for what you guys are doing now. Um, and you'd be surprised if they got in real logging shape, what they could put out too, what they could produce. Um, but uh, uh, what else might I share? Does anyone have any questions? If you don't mind me asking, how much do you make off a truckload a day? Um, more than you'd think. Uh, it, <laughs> if you're uncomfortable, I was just, just wondering. I've always asked loggers that when I go on bigger sites and I've seen it up north. Do many of them tell you what they make? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no one. Well, how much is like a, if you put a load of wood on a truck today? It oh, varies so much. That's why they, you won't uh, get an answer because it does vary so much. The different species, the different size trucks, uh, it just varies a lot. Okay. Thank so. you. Would you say that people pay you more because you have leave less of an impact on different grounds? People don't pay me anything. Mm. Um, I have to earn it. You know, in other words, I go on a job, I buy stumpage by the board foot, by the thousand. And so I have to, whatever I make, I have to earn. I don't get, people don't pay me to come do the work. I shouldn't say that because I actually talked to the forester here and yeah. I'm going to do some really poor, low quality stuff that they want me to do and they're going to actually pay me by the day to do that but i know probably basically never done that before okay. but um, there i was just going to say there are areas where people care about the ecology and they do want you to come yes but because we, of that reason where we live especially up north of here it's actually uh, the economy is not that great so that's i've never even had a job up there that people wanted horses on they want the money they, they want to make the most money as they can on there property i was just gonna ask like when you pull the logs out of the woods who comes and picks them up like what do you do with them after you pull them out i i hire a trucker to, to truck oh, okay. in the situation i had here working for the college um they paid me so much per thousand and then they supplied the trucker and they took care of the markets oh, okay. but when i'm on my own jobs i have to hire it all done yeah. does the uh truck driver use a set time that comes or do you he just show up at the end of the day just shows up whenever i mean he'll usually like my trucker the trucker that the college hired um he would he'd come and i'd have four or five loads there so he'd haul four or five loads in one day oh you have enough to supply him to keep going all day long a lot of times oh, yes okay. yes sometimes he might come for one load might come for for two loads it just depends all right you know he works on his schedule so it's not like uh um i always have a machine at the landing so i can pile them up so i can put a lot of wood Okay. in a small area so it's not usually it's not a big problem as far as running out of room so i can i can wait and do you ever do house lots clear house lots by chance i have before yeah is that hard with a smaller area or like trying to move around everything or no uh the same a lot of times of those house lots that i used to do years ago i remember i would pull trees and not even limb them up pull them completely with the limbs on to a section and then i stopped limb them all up throw them into a pile and be burning at the same time. Oh, that's pretty smart. Yeah, that worked pretty good. Back at home when we do house lots, we just grab an excavator and a chainsaw and just right. do it pretty lethal. Right. right. Throw the back of a dump truck. I have an lot. excavator now, so that's probably the way I would do it yeah. also now. Do you have to truck and trailer your horses? I do. I, I wouldn't have to necessarily in some places, but uh, generally I do, yes. Even up here, and up here is a 50 minute drive for me. Yeah. So it's a long ways, um, but uh, I generally do, yeah. They're used to it because they do it a lot. Do you only bring two to the job a day? Do you have a I, spare? Used to, I used to come with three horses all the time years ago because I'd have a single horse that would skid like in a situation like this. They'd, they'd skid short distance, bunch them together, and then I'd take the team with a bigger load. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. But, but lately I've just been, just been using the team. <coughs> it takes more work in some ways, but less work in others because you, you can pull so much more with the team. But you gotta make a six foot trail at every log, whereas a single horse could just go anywhere. You know? 
So do you drop all the trees before you have them? Have the horses come in? No, no. I, I cut one tree, I'll get it out, and then cut the next tree. Oh, okay. This crisscrossing of trees, it just takes actually longer. Oh, um, okay. So I don't like to work in brush. No, it sounds brutal. What made you start using horses for logging? Have you always done it or? I've always done it. I've, I, I grew up in a logging family. Uh, I have a, my father and two of my brothers, well, both my brothers were uh, skitter operators, skitter loggers. But I've always liked horses. And, and uh, when I was a senior in high school, my father grew up with horses because he was of that age, you know. And, uh, but he stopped using skitters and went back to using horses because he knew I liked horses. And so at, when I was a senior in high school, I, would, I went to school for one class that, that year. And I, then I went to the woods and, and logged with him. So that's how I got my experience. But mostly because I like it yeah. and because I can, you know. Absolutely. And I'll also shout out some of your recent videos training uh, your younger horses how to pull and how to do those sorts of things. Because I know that, for example, Ryan, one of our students here, has mentioned that he has some horses at home that he wants to see if he can start pulling things with. Okay. Little ponies and stuff. Yeah. But like, still shout out to some of your videos yeah. showing that training method yeah. from step one all the way from how to harness train, how to drive, to then pulling yeah. and doing things like that. So. And that, the one horse, the three year old that I'm working right now, and He's doing really good. He's looking good, yeah, yeah, so. for sure. And Jim has Belgians, Pertrans, and Suffolks. Okay. So you get to see all varieties. Yeah. The less hairy ones. <laughs> yeah, so. Why? Yeah, we, well, I've tried before to set them on different ones to pull her back a little bit, but it wasn't doing anything, so I think that they're back even now. They are even. But do you think that I should just do that? They wouldn't do anything. Like, even because I shifted, I shifted her Y back because I wasn't hitting his head at all. Like, anytime I'd give him directions, it was just her, so I shifted her Y back. But should I shift that one? Yeah, and the reason being is yeah, bring his, I, I know. Bring his head off the right quite a bit. Just try it. Okay. Angle, 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 greater yeah, guide. Yeah, it's not good. Drop the two holes. Dude, Absolutely, that's yeah. gross. We have a look at like, the school desks and stuff like that. They're just like... I know, but yeah. that's it's just, like, it's like awful. Holes. Yeah, it's, it's so, like the tiny It may not help at all. Someone so 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 definitely try. made that. I've got to use some wood paint sandpaper. It's like 4,000 bits.
day in the woods. <laughs> so yes, we had a good little time here with, with Camille and her, her uh, class at Possumus College. And uh, we'll have to do this again sometime. Yeah. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Yep. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>